everybody! Happy Thursday! How are you doing? Are you doing okay? For those of you who are still on lockdown here in Auckland, welcome to another day of lockdown. I don't know about you, but it was rainy this morning, but the sun has come out, so I'm feeling a little bit chirpier, but there may be thunderstorms coming. So if you are thinking about going outside, make sure you go outside soon before the thunderstorms come. If you're not in Auckland and you've rushed home from school to watch us, hello, tell us how the weather is in your area. What we're looking for today is windy weather. Now I know it's windy in New Plymouth because Trevor, who watches this all the time, has told me that it's windy in New Plymouth. Is it windy anywhere else where you are? We're gonna need some wind today because we're gonna make a kite. If you are new to the show, welcome. The way this works is we're gonna do a science or engineering experiment. We're gonna build something, then we're gonna test it. Um, and if your grown-ups are watching on Facebook, they can say hello using the comment section. Just put your child's name in, their age and where they're from. If you're watching on the YouTube, hello, we can't use the comments, but hi to everybody anyway. Why don't we start with some hellos and then we'll get started with our equipment list. So who do we have watching today? We have, hi Peckers, this is Peckers and Nanogirl, that's me in Waiuku. We love your shows. Hi. Uh, hi Nanogirl, Erin and Alina are watching from Glenfield. Hi. Uh, hello Nanogirl from Lucas, the Peckers namer. That's right, Lucas named Peckers and Peckers is sitting here with us with Peckers' lab specs on. Uh, hi Nanogirl, Peckers and Noodle from Maddie in Naranek. Oh, Noodle's not here yet. Noodle can come along later if you want to say hello to Noodle. Um, hi Nanogirl from Luca and Sienna in St. Helias. We love your videos. Oh, I'm so glad. Thanks for joining us for another day. Uh, hi from Mesco in Auckland. Hi. Uh, hi from Cyrus in Auckland. Really love your show and I watch it every day. You are here every day, Cyrus. I'm so excited that you're here again. Kia ora Nanogirl, it's James Weber from Auckland. Hi James Weber, how are you? Uh, hi Nanogirl from uh, Emily and Evie, kia ora. Uh, hi Nanago, Renzo again. Renzo, you're always here. I can't wait to wake. I can't wait to make a kite and fly it. Me too. We're going to make a fun kite today. Hello, Nanago and Peckers. My favourite time of day must be 3:30. Daniel and Anna from Milford in Auckland. Hi. Okay, so if you you get how that works. If you haven't done a hello before, if you're first time here, say hello. We're going to get our equipment ready. So for today, you are going to need a ruler. We're going to do some measuring today. You're gonna need some string or some wool, something that you're gonna tie your kite to so it doesn't fly away. You're gonna need a pen or a pencil so that you can make some marks with your measuring. You're gonna need some lightweight wood. Uh, is, is it Palmerston North is windy and rainy? Okay, it's good to know in Palmy it's windy. Is it windy anywhere else? It's cold and it's rained down. Oh, Chardonnay, it's very, is it windy though, Chardonnay in Moscow? Okay, you're gonna need some lightweight sticks now. I have cheated because I have some wooden bamboo skewers that we use to um, barbecue meat. Or if you don't have any of these, outside you might be able to find some long twigs. So you really want them to be as lightweight as possible if you're gonna get it to fly. So I have some lightweight sticks or skewers. If you can't find these, you're gonna to have to rummage outside and see if you can find some lightweight sticks. And you're gonna need them to be my ones are about 20 centimeters long. They can be a bit shorter if you want, or maybe you want to tie lots of toothpicks together. You're going to need some, we'll talk about tying things together. You're going to need some sticky tape. I have some sticky tape down here. And you're going to need some sort of what we call a non-permeable fabric something that the air can't go through easily. Now you might, if you're grown up, subscribe to a newspaper, then a broadsheet newspaper is gonna be amazing for this. Or if you have a spare uh, bit of plastic bin liner, so this is, this has come from the rubbish bin, you might want one of these. I've cut one of those up. Or sometimes I get in the mail a magazine and the magazine comes in a plastic cover to keep it dry from the rain. You could use maybe a plastic cover. You want something that is impermeable to the wind. So something made out of plastic is helpful, but I know there are a lot of plastic free households. And so you could use some newspaper. Um, I tried it using baking paper, but the challenge with the baking paper is my tape doesn't stick to it. So baking paper will work as long as you have some really good sticky tape. Masking tape works better than the standard sticky tape for that. So grab your ingredients you're going to need. I'm going to use three little wooden sticks here, or if you've got some wooden twigs, grab those. You're going to need some string or some twine or some wool to hold your kite onto. I'm going to do some measuring. You're going to need a ruler. You're going to need a pen so you can figure out where your measurement was. Some sticky tape and then your permeable or impermeable membrane. Do you have a magazine uh, cover, a bit of plastic? I'm going to use a bin liner here. 
um, or a little bit of plastic there. So the other thing, if you want your kite to last longer, you could use some tarp. If you have some tarp left in the garage, you might want to sacrifice a little bit of that. Just to let you know how big it's going to be, my measurement is going to be 40 centimeters long. My kite's going to be 40 centimeters by about 30 centimeters wide. So once you've got your, if you've got a sheet of plastic, see if you can cut it. Bubble wrap might work. It might be a bit heavy because the bubble wrap area has got doubles, but I think it's worth a try. Definitely. If you, well, bubble wrap's all you've got. Let's try that. Does baking paper work? Baking paper definitely works. The challenge you're going to have is baking paper is very slippy. So when it comes to your sticky tape, see if your grown-ups have got a different type of sticky tape, maybe some masking tape or some duct tape to help you stick it down. Um, because baking paper is amazing as a material, but this, a lot of sticky tape doesn't seem to stick to it. But if you've got some newspaper instead, see if you can grab some newspaper. If you don't have any newspaper, just grab a sheet of A4 paper instead, and that should be fine. We're going to try some different materials, and then if it doesn't work, that's the great thing about what we're doing today. And um, Glab wrap will probably be quite difficult because it's probably going to want to stick to itself. It's going to be quite hard to lay it out and not have it stick to everything else. But it's worth a try. I've got some Glad wrap down here um, and let me well we can always try it so we're going to try different materials and what we're going to learn today is some materials are going to work better than other materials and so if it doesn't work we'll just try something different that's the great thing about science and engineering is it's all about trying different things and seeing what happens so let me ha know how you get on with your different materials while you are grabbing all of your things to get ready all of your equipment we're going to watch a video now this is from one of our nanogirl scientists some of you may know the nanogirl scientists She's known as Katie Fish. Now, Katie Fish is a qualified marine biologist. You may have met her at a Nano Girl show, and she loves to study the oceans and she loves to study fish. And today she's here to tell you all about. Well, why don't you take a look and see? Hi everyone, I'm Kate from Nanogirl. I'm a marine biologist and one of my favorite things to do in summer is to collect loads of cool shells and rocks from the beaches. I've got an awesome experiment where you can see what minerals your rock is made from and you might even get to see a rock fizz. So first of all, I have a rock. I collected it from Lake Wakatipu in Queenstown and I have a coin. You can use anything that's hard enough to scratch the surface of your rock because what we're going to do is we're just going to make a little scratch right in the middle. Okay, once we've got a scratch we're going to need a way of looking really closely at what's going on on the surface of this rock. So if you've got a magnifying glass you can use that. I'm going to use my NanoGirl clip-on microscope. It's just going to go over my phone like this. And now what I'm going to do, and this is the fun part, I'm going to take a little bit of vinegar and just dab it right into that scratch that I made earlier. We're going to get really close to this rock and take a little look at what's going on. And oh, I can see it fizzing. It looks like lots of little bubbles on the surface of my rock all rising to the surface. Now, that tells me that this rock has the mineral calcium carbonate in it. And calcium carbonate is also what shells are made of, like this cockle shell that I have from the beach. So if I do the same thing again, take my coin and make a scratch on the surface of the cockle shell, let's see what we find out. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of vinegar on the surface of the shell and let's take a look. Yes, I can see it fizzing again. Awesome. So. This shell is made of calcium carbonate, which is also in this rock. And that tells me that this rock has got tiny bits of shell in it. And that means that this rock probably came from under the sea. You can be a rock detective and investigate where the rocks in the beaches near you came from. All you need is a coin and a bit of vinegar. Have a rocking great summer, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Katie Fish. That was super fun. And for some of you, you might live by the beach. And so this is a really experiment for you to do. You're just going to grab some shells and put a little bit of vinegar on after scratching and then look really, really closely. Or if you have a nanogirl microscope, you can do what Katie Fish did and look super close where it's magnified and see if it fizzes. And therefore, you'll know it's made out of calcium carbonate. So if you want to do that, visit nanogirl.co. You can go to our shop, buy a microscope, or you can see that video in the kids zone section at nanogirl.co. Okay, how are you doing with your ingredients? So I took my sheet of plastic that I got from my um, old plastic bag and I've cut it out. Now, go, do I know how long Katie has been doing? I assume this means job. Katie, 
Katie Fish has been doing her job for, I think, the last five years after graduating with a PhD, maybe four years. But she was doing her research for a long time. She's been to Antarctica multiple times. She's done some cool things. And Katie Fish, her research is all about starfish. So I think that's really interesting. And she's told me all sorts of facts about starfish and if we weren't in lockdown we would be able to have Katie Fish in the studio but sadly Katie Fish has to be at home because she's in Auckland and she's in lockdown. Now I've cut out a square of plastic I'm just going to show you my square of plastic is about 40 centimeters by 30 centimeters give or take so you want that sort of shape or size if it's smaller that's okay don't worry you're going to make your skewer smaller instead. Okay so, does everybody have all of their ingredients ready? Are you all good? All right, while you're getting them all ready, but we'll do the first thing and then we'll do some photos. So, the first thing I want you to do is measure with your ruler. If it's long enough, I want you to measure 40 centimeters. So, from the top, I'm gonna measure, Wee! there's 30. My ruler isn't long enough. I'm going to add another 10, 40 centimeters straight down the middle. And then from there, I'm going to measure 15 centimeters from the top. I, I'm using three skewers. It's all going to depend on how big a kite that you want. I'm only going to need three today. Okay, so we've got one 40 centimeter line and then 15 centimeters down, I'm going to draw a bit of a horizontal line here. I will definitely slow down. I'm just going to draw mine out so you can see that this is 40 centimeters up and down and then 15 centimeters along here. I've just made a little bit of a mark so I know where I am but this whole length is 40 centimeters. If you're sheet of anything isn't long enough that's okay just make it as long as you've got we can definitely work within that so i know that i can make my two skewers make 40 centimeters in length by tying them together in the middle so i've got a 40 centimeter line and i want to make a 40 centimeter long skewer to do that i'm going to have to tape my two skewers together so I'm going to hold them against that line to see how long they are and you may notice that skewers have a pointy end so if you're using skewers like me put the pointy end towards each other and then use some tape and you're going to tape them together my tape's got bubble mix on it and it's not sticky let me find my other tape you're going to tape them together in the middle oh I've got a dual screen that's a new feature uh, you're going to tape them in the middle so that they stick in the middle so that you end up with one long answer. skewer rather than two short skewers. So I'm just going to tape these in the middle. So I have one long skewer that's 40 centimeters long. Okay, I'm going to let you catch up with that. And while you're catching up, making one long 40 centimeter skewer, Let's take a look at some photos that you sent in overnight. Who has sent in their photos? Oh, Invisible Ink and Refraction by Luca and Sienna from St. Helier's School. Look at this. It's a bubble pet from Shweta, Manuera Essential School. That's cool. Uh, the Boat Experiment by James in Stanley Bay. James, your flowers are beautiful. Um, the Slime Experiment by Scientist. Kayla, oh Kayla, that is a very sticky slime experiment. Oh, I like that. And it looks like you're wearing a birthday party. I wonder if you were having a Nano Girl slime birthday party on there. So that would be cool. Hey, I know that some of you who are not in lockdown had a Nano Girl birthday party over the weekend. Um, so happy birthday to you if you did that. If you're in Auckland, I'm afraid we still can't do our birthday parties because we're still in lockdown, but we can think about birthday parties. How are you doing? Okay, so I have my skewer and I've stuck two skewers in the middle with some sticky tape. So I've got one long skewer that is 40 centimeters long. And I'm gonna put that down the line here in the middle where I drew it. Now 15 centimeters along is where I want my other skewer to be. If your skewer has a pointy sharp bit and you're worried about poking yourself, it's really easy 
to cut that sharp bit off so you don't poke your finger if you want to do that. And then I'm going to position my other skewer in the middle at that 15 centimeter line. So that's why we've drawn the 15 centimeter line. The first thing I want to do though is I want to tape down my skewer to the middle of my bag here. So I'm just going to grab some tape. I'm going to tape it at the top and at the bottom. So here's my sticky tape. And I'm going to put a bit of sticky tape down here at the bottom so it sticks and some up at the top so it sticks. So now my long skewer is going to be stuck to the bottom and to the top of my bag, like so. How are you doing? Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Are you all keeping up? So now if I wiggle it around, I can see that I have a skewer stuck to the top and the bottom over here. Now you're going to take your middle skewer. Storm is using sticks from our garden. That's okay. Let's see how it turns out. Storm, I'm really excited. That's the great thing about engineering. We're just going to find the things that we can use around us. So my skewer is 25 centimeters long. So I need to find the middle point of my skewer. You can estimate it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if it's 24 centimeters long, halfway between that is going to be 12. So I'm just going to put a little notch here at 12. When is the joke of the day? The joke of the day is never until the end of the show or at least three quarters of the way through. So it's coming. We're not there yet. Now you want to stick your skewer horizontally at that 15 centimeter line. And I'm going to stick it down onto my bag over here. Yours is too long. That's okay. You can just trim it. The great thing about skewers and sticks is they're easy to break. I will definitely slow down. So now I've got my skewer. You see, I've tucked it underneath at the halfway line and I'm just going to stick this down and we've made a bit of a crush shape. Can you see a crush shape that we have made? So I have my skewer going across and my double skewer coming down. And I now want to make a diamond shape. So we're going to make a diamond shape kite. So when you've stuck down your middle skewer and your top skewer, and I will wait for you, don't worry if I'm going too fast. I want you to draw a line between the ends of your skewers. And that should give you a diamond shape. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now you can see I have a diamond shape that is going outside my skewer that I've made here. Okay, while I wait for you to catch up on that, why don't we go to some videos that you sent in overnight? Hi, my neighbor. Thanks for helping me build the plane. Bye, Nana Girl. Hi, Nana Girl. We did um, well, the seed experiment, and these are the results of our experiment. I'm going to do one facing upwards and one facing downwards like this. And I want to see if this one would be like half turn. Well, it did half turn. I love all your videos. Thank you for sharing those. Now, don't worry if you haven't caught up yet. There's plenty of time. I'm not going to go ahead until you've all caught up. But this is where we've got to so far. So you've drawn a 40 centimeter line down the middle, and then you've stuck 40 centimeters worth of skewer down the middle, and then you found 15 centimeters from the top, and then you've attached your skewer horizontally at that point. 
And then all I've done is draw a diamond shape that points connect at the top of all of the skewers. So don't worry, we're not going ahead yet. Let's do some shout outs while we wait for you to all catch up. Who has said hello? Hello, Nana Girl from Solar and Celeste in Auckland. Hi. Hello again, Nana Girl from Agnes and Charlotte in Browns Bay. Hi. Hi from Amelia and Mihi in Lower Hutt. Hi. Hi from Max and uh, Emily in Windy Ridge, Glenfield. Great place for kite flying. Windy Ridge is the perfect place for kite flying. I love the name Windy Ridge. Hello, Nana Girl. My name is uh, Sarasha. I am nine. I'm from Auckland. I have watched you on YouTube, but this is my first live stream. Welcome to the live stream. Who else do we have? Hello, Nana Girl from Sophia and Blake, all the way out at Beachlands. Is it windy at Beachlands today? Kia from Jayla and Isla in Auckland, as well as our helper, the panda. Oh, Peckers, there's a panda that's helping over there. Hello, Harriet and Amelia from Auckland. Hi, Harriet. Hi, Amelia. Uh, hi, Michaela in Auckland again. Hi, Michaela. How are you? Hello. Shout out for Matilda and Des, please. We watch you most days and are loving it. Here's your shout out. Hi. Hi from Isabel and Sandringham in Auckland. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Nano Girl and Peckers. That's for you from Jenna in Auckland. Hi. Hello from Denise. Hi, Denise. And Nathaniel and Megan from Beachhaven, Auckland love kite flying. Woohoo, you come every day. It's so nice to hear from you again. Hi, Nana Girl, it's Harriet and Amelia from Auckland. Hello, Harriet. Hello, Amelia. Uh, hi, Nana Girl from Michaela in Auckland again. Hi, again. Uh, kia ora, it's Kevani from Mount Wellington. Hi, Kevani. Uh, hi, Nana Girl and Peckers from Jack and Hazel in Timaru. It's a bit windy there. That's so good. You can practice your kites. Hi again from Zoe F in Panmure, Auckland. I love Nana Girl science. I love that we're doing science together. Okay, so you made your diamond shape. We're going to cut out the diamond shape now. So grab your scissors and then cut. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but you're going to cut along that diamond shape line that you made all the way across here. So can I do my top down camera so you can see what I'm up to? Okay, you can see that I'm cutting close to, but not exactly along the line. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going a little bit outside the line that I drew. And you're going to cut your diamond shape out. And this is because we're making a diamond shaped kite. Now kites come in lots of different shapes and lots of different sizes. I'm making this one this size because it's easy and I didn't have to have too many skewers. But if you have some big sticks and lots of wind, you might be able to make a gigantic kite. And if you have only small sticks, then maybe you can just make a tiny kite. Now the thing about kite is you want the area to be as big as possible uh, while the weight is low so that it can lift up in the air without being too heavy, but having a big, surface area and I'm going to keep these bits on the end don't throw those bits away because those bits are going to be helpful later on to make a tail for us so when you cut them off don't throw them away you're going to keep these bits later on because we're going to use those for a tail so now you should have a diamond shape that's about 40 centimeters long and 15 centimeters and it's stuck the paper or the plastic and your skewers are stuck together. Now, did you know that the earliest record of kite flying, of lifting up a human being, was in Japan in the 17th century, where apparently they used to lift up people, construction workers, who were building the tops of the temples, and they used to lift them up by kite and drop them off so that they could keep building the roof of the temple. That's kind of cool. And kites can pick lots of different people up depending on the type of kite. Those of you who know me personally know that my favorite sport is called kite surfing, which is where I have a gigantic kite attached to me and a board on my feet. And I love to be out in the ocean. So this is a picture of me. And this is me out at Murawai Beach on the west coast of Auckland. And you can see I have a gigantic kite and I'm in the ocean on the bottom being pulled along. Now the kite that we're making today is not as big as some of my big kites. That kite that I'm flying there is 11 meters. We're not making an 11 meter kite, we're only making a 40 centimeter kite. So luckily my feet are gonna stay on the ground, but I can use kite and people can use kites to pick humans up and help them to fly, which is kind of cool. 
And maybe when it was Matariki, you flew a kite. We often use kites to celebrate Matariki uh, or the Māori New Year. And because it's Māori Language Week, you may want to learn the word Manu Tukutuku, Māori for kite. And so Manu Tukutuku is what you would fly at Matariki to celebrate Matariki. So there you go. How are you doing on your kites? Are you catching up? All right, we're gonna to go to our next bit and then we're gonna to go to our joke of the day. So grab your string, grab your string. I want you to cut your length of string. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the length of string twice. I want you to cut it to be about the same width as your skewer. So that's about 24 centimeters for me. And then I want you to cut a length that is as long as your longest skewer, which we knew was about 40 centimeters for me. So I have two lengths of string and I'm gonna tape those. So I'm gonna tape the top length of string to the top of my skewer up here. Now I'm taping it because I'm not very good at tying knots, but if you're a good knot tyer and you want to practice your knot tying, you can totally tie it to the ends of the skewers too. I just find that tape is very easy when you're not very good at tying knots. But if you're a good knot tie, feel free to tie the knots rather than tape it down. So I'm gonna tape the string to the top and I'm gonna take the string to the side pieces. Let me show you here. So now I've got this piece of string. I'm gonna tape it on the end over here and I'm gonna tape it on the end over here. If you can tie knots, then it's gonna be much more secure if you tie a double knot, but as I'm not very good at tying knots, and I know that knots are quite hard for some people to do, instead we're just gonna tape ours on. So now you can see that I have a horizontal piece of string and a vertical piece of string, and they're all tied together. How are you doing? Have you got this far? While I'm waiting for you to catch up, why don't we do our joke of the day? Let's do our joke of the day. And I know, Lucas, you asked for a joke of the day, so here it is. Doo -doo -doo -doo. What is the best day to fly a kite? What do you think? What do you think the best day is to fly a kite? Who's got a guess? Anybody? <laughs> it's Wednesday. Get it? <sighs> Wednesday, windy day. It's Wednesday. I like that joke. Very good joke. So. Next, we want to think about how a kite will fly. Now, kites fly because of a difference in air pressure. And one of the things about this kite, even though it's a diamond shape, it doesn't really know which way is up or which way is down. Remember, if you've got a better joke than Anna Girl, please tell us your better joke that's to do with kites or flying or windy, because my jokes are always rubbish. So what we need to do is add a tail so we can stabilize it. If we don't add a tail, our kite's just gonna spin around and be all squirrely. So we're gonna add a tail. And the tail I like to add is very, very simple. I like to take the scraps that we cut off before and stick them. You thought it'd be fly day. That's a way better, way better answer than mine. So let's go down to our top-down camera. I'm gonna take the little strip that we had that we cut off before and I'm gonna stick this onto the bottom as my tail. And a tail is very important in a kite because it's gonna help stabilize how it flies and stop it being so squirrely when it flies. So I'm gonna stick, uh, I'm gonna try, try put two together. I'll put, I'll put two together, why not? I'll make it a long tail. You can experiment and see which works better, a short tail or a long tail. And if you have ways of decorating it, you might wanna put some ribbons on or some stickers. Depends what you have lying around the house. Uh, what, why did Elsa lose her kite? <gasps> she let it go, let it go. Very good, very good joke over there. Much better than my jokes. Okay, so now I have a tail attached. Can you see my tail attached to the bottom of my kite? So that's gonna help it stabilize and fly in the air. But we're missing something really important here. And if I were to go out on a windy day now and just put this kite out there, if it flew away, it would fly away forever because I'm not able to hold on to it. So the final thing we're gonna need for our construction 
is a piece of string that's long enough for us to hold on to. So I want you to take a piece of string and think about how high you want your kite to fly and that's how long your string will be. So I'm going to cut my string to be oh, twice, probably the length of my bottom, no, maybe twice as long as both of my arms. But it all depends on how much space you have. I don't have much space in my lab to fly kites, so my string is going to be quite short. But if you have a big outdoor space that you can run around in, then you might want your string to be very, very long. Okay, pay attention. If you have a grown up to help you tie a knot, this is where we're gonna have to tie a knot. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's go to my top down camera. You can see with the two pieces of string that you had, one that was going up and down and one that was going left and right. You're gonna find where they meet in the middle and cross over and you're gonna join them together by tying a double knot right at that point. So you're gonna have a double knot that ties the two bits of string that are taped to your skewer together. So now I can see that it's all tied together. How are you doing? Okay, let's do my front camera. Should be able to see that I have a piece of string that is now tying my other pieces of string together. All right, I'm gonna let you catch up on that and we're gonna play What's Under Nano Girl's Microscope? Do, 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 do. Let's take a look. It is something that I have used today. So hopefully it's an easy one. Look at the colors. I love the colors of this one today. Who can guess what is under my microscope? What do you think it is? It's got multiple shades of brown and it looks like it's lots of lines. And this is close up of something that we would have used today. What do you think it might be? What have I used today that might be that color and might be that texture? Do we have any guesses? We have a guess for a wooden stick. Isabel says skewers. Skewer. You are all totally correct. You know it's an easy peasy one. It's my skewer. How cool does that look up close up? So if you use wooden skewers today, take a look at your wooden skewers now and now look at them under the microscope and you'll see close up that they're made up of lots of bits of wood. And wood has this amazing texture. And so this is really cool. I really like looking at wood close up. All right, how are you doing? You know what time it is. It's time to fly our kites. If you have a windy day and you are able to get outside, then let me see a video of you flying your kite. I would love to see how you get on. I'm gonna clear the table because it's gonna get a bit windy in here. Peckers, I'm just gonna put you down here for protection. If you wanna share your videos or your photos with us, please do that. Videos at nanogirllabs.com and we can share it with everybody who watches our show and then you'll be super famous. So send us your videos, send us your photos. Let me see how your kite gets on. And don't forget, you can make any size of kite that you like, any shape of kite that you like. We've done a diamond one today because it's an easy one to make. And we did one where we tape the ends, but if you want to practice your knot tying, you can practice tying your knots on the corners. We're gonna see how it flies. Now, I am indoors in my lab and it's not very windy, but luckily I have a fan over here. So, shall we see how it flies? I'm gonna turn my fan on. And let's see what happens when I put the wind on. Hold on, here we go, fan. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's windy. So I'm going to hold my kite up to the wind. If it's not windy in your house, don't forget, you can go outside for your exercise today if you're in lockdown and run as fast as you can to create an apparent wind. So I've got, you can see it's windy because my tail is flying. I'm going to let it go. Wah! There it is. So there's my kite. You can see it's flying all by itself thanks to the wind. And it's windy in my studio. Oh, because I have a fan that's having a very bad day. I'm just gonna turn that fan off. Ooh, <laughs> it's very good wind over there. So if I were to run as fast as I could, I would also be able to make some apparent wind, which would also help my kite to fly as I run along. And you'll be able to feel your kite tugging as you run along. And that tugging is the air resistance because the air can't pass through your kite material and that's what's helping it to fly. So I wanna see pictures and videos of you running outside, getting all your exercise as your amazing kite flies. Don't forget to put the tail on the end. The tail is gonna stop it spinning around. 
so that you can have the best flying kite ever. Oh, where's Noodle is the question. Noodle is having a nap. Would you like to see Noodle before I go? Should we do a quick Noodle before I go? Hold on, I'll bring the chair over because as you know, Noodle is too short to see over my table. So I'll bring a chair and I'll see if Noodle wants to come and say goodbye. Before we go, we have to give him a call though. Hold on, Noodle. He might not come today. Oh no, I can hear him coming up the stairs. Do, 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 do. Let's see if he comes in to say goodbye to you all and then let me see how your kites are flying. Noodle doesn't seem to want to come at all. Let me give him one more call. Noodle! Oh, he's coming, wait, wait, wait. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Hello, Noodle, everybody wants to say goodbye to you. Come on up and say hi. Here he is. <laughs> Everybody wants to say hi to Noodle. Hi, Noodle. He's been sleeping in a sunbeam, so he's a little bit tired. Uh, and I'm not sure he wants the windy day of the fan. So you can see he's very sleepy today. Okay, before we go, we're going to do some shout outs, Noodle. Are you ready to do some shout outs? Here, Noodle, you can have Peckers come and help you. Here are the shout outs. Hello, Nana Girl from six year old Olive in Northcote. Hi, Olive. Oh, Noodle's having a yawn. Hello, Nana Girl, Emma Rain, and Peckers. Here are Rain's and Peckers and Noodle. Uh, hi from Lucas and Aviana. Hi, how are you? Uh, hi from Stan Marsh and Eric in Auckland. Hello. Hi, Nana Girl. Love your experiments. Please shout out to Alex from Birkenhead and St. Mary's School. You are yawning a lot. Hi from Ada Hobsonville, Auckland. This is your first time? Welcome to the show. We've got a great show tomorrow too. Come back tomorrow. Uh, hi, Nana Girl from Ruby D and E. Ruby D, you are always here. Hi from Naomi in Wellington. Hi, Naomi. Uh, we can't wait to fly our kites from Xavier and Bowden and Forest Hill. Don't forget to send me a video so I can see you flying your kites too. Thank you from Mustafa. Thank you, Mustafa. And thank you again for your secret message, Super Mustafa. That was fun. Tomorrow is Friday. Now, Friday is treat day in the Nano Girl house. So if you want to treat with me, we are going to learn the science of how to make instant ice cream. That's ice cream in less than five minutes. And only because it's a treat day for Friday, you can have it for your weekend. So if you want to make ice cream with me tomorrow, don't forget to subscribe, get your parents to, or your grown-ups to log in and subscribe, and then we'll send them an email in the morning of the ingredients you will need. You will need to have some cream tomorrow, fresh cream. So make sure you've got some fresh cream in the fridge. If you don't have fresh cream, or if you're dairy intolerant, you can use yogurt too. So make sure you've got that stash in the fridge. If your grown-ups don't, you might want to pest them and see if they can get you some yogurt or some fresh cream for tomorrow, because we're going to make science ice cream. Otherwise, <laughs> Noodle's gone to sleep down here. I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.